Hey, what's up guys, Weekly Light here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get a five in AP Calculus in less than five minutes. So slope is your delta y over delta x. f of x, g of x, h of x, all that, those are examples of functions. Constants are usually a, b, c, and k. They can also be other letters. So the derivative is a function that gives a slope of a function at any x. It's usually written as f prime x, or simply f prime. It can also be other letters such as u or g. The derivative of a function is denoted dy over dx, which is also df of x over dx, which also becomes d over dx, f of x. The derivative of x to the a is ax to the a minus 1 power. For example, x squared it becomes 2x, and x to the third becomes 3x squared. Look at the formula handout in the description that gives some important derivatives. Numbers 8 through 15 are the most important, the rest are a little extra. If g of x equals kf of x, then g prime x is equal to kf prime x. If h of x is equal to g of x plus f of x, then h prime x is equal to g prime x plus f prime x. If h of x is equal to g of x times f of x, h prime x is equal to g prime times f plus f prime times g. If h of x is equal to f of g of x, then h prime x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime x. Division is simply multiplication by the inverse, so since you have the product rule here, you don't need to memorize the quotient rule. f prime prime is the second derivative, f prime 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 is the third derivative, and so on and so forth. If s is your position function, then the derivative of your position function is your velocity function. The second derivative of your position function is the derivative of your velocity function, which is also equal to the acceleration function. The slope and the first derivative are equal to zero at flat spots, which are usually local minimums or local maximums, or just critical numbers that are neither local min or local max. The second derivative denotes concavity, and f prime prime equals zero, it might be a point of inflection. If the second derivative is positive, it's concave up. If the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. You should have a basic understanding of series from pre-calculus. So if it approaches infinity, you just call it an infinite series. It converges if the infinite sum is equal to a value, but it diverges if the infinite sum does not converge to a value. Um, there's six tests of convergence that are also in the description. Those are pretty self-explanatory. There are very few questions that directly ask for these tests of convergence, so it's just a good idea to know if it converges or not. Um, if the denominator grows faster, then it will most likely converge down to zero. And you should know that n to the n grows the fastest while ln x grows the slowest. Uh, the power series is 1 over n to the p, and it always converges if p is greater than 1. The power series is just your basic series, but it has an x minus c to the n component. It either converges for all x, converges only for x equals c, or converges on a certain interval of x. Taylor series are basically polynomial approximations of functions centered at certain points. Uh, the more terms you have, the more precise they are. It goes in the form of the nth derivative of f uh, evaluated at its center times x minus c to the n all over n factorial for each term, and you just do as many terms as it asks you to do. Using a table is very beneficial here. A Maclaurin series is simply a Taylor series centered at zero, so it's much easier. Lagrange error is equal to your next term, basically. Uh, Riemann sums are rectangle estimates, left, right, mid, and trapezoid. It just depends on how you're finding the area. More rectangles is more precise. Integrals are the area under the curve, and it's basically just the derivative backwards. You just got to remember to put the c, and that's about it. Indefinite integrals, you're trying to get the original function usually, and definite integrals, you're trying to find the net change on the interval or the area under the curve on a certain interval. Definite integrals are super easy. You just evaluate the integral, and then you subtract the stop from the start point. Look at the formula handout 7 through 20. The more important ones go first. If you try to integrate a fraction, you have to manipulate it to make it easier most of the time. You can either try train rolling it, breaking it up, long division, completing the square, or partial fractions. You should know how to do uh, most of these from pre-calculus. For integration by parts, the integral of u v prime is equal to u v minus the integral of u prime v. Use a table for this to make it much easier. The area between functions, you just subtract the different areas. Rotational volume is the integral from a to b pi r squared, where r is your function for your height. For polar area, you use the formula area is equal to 1 half integral from a to b r, r of theta squared d theta. And your polar arc length is integral from a to b square root of r squared plus r prime squared d theta. Differential equations are basically just moving stuff around and integrating in order to remove the y primes and turning them back into the y, y equal form. They're used for slope field problems, Euler's method problems, and growth problems. Of those, the growth problems are the most likely to encounter in the test.